Let us pray. A great God in heaven, we thank you for an evening with you. We thank you because of your word, which you have given unto us. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that is always present to instruct and interpret your word unto us. We are praying, O oh Lord, you enrich our Christian lives by the study of your word in Jesus' name. We pray that every one of us here listening to your word will tremendously be profited by the study in Jesus' name. We thank you for our young people, children who are here, and for their love for the word. Thank you for the adults too. We're praying as you are blessing the adults, so bless the young people too, in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding. Let's behold wondrous things out of your word. Strengthen us from the study of your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tonight, we come to the concluding verses of the epistle of James. We've been for some weeks now, even for some months, we've been studying the epistle of James. And now we come to James chapter 5, verses 19 and 20, which happen to be the last two verses of the epistle. Please open your Bible as we read together in preparation for study. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Those are the wonderful verses that uh, James concludes the epistle with. They are gracious uh, revelations to us concerning the sin that uh, we need to learn as believers on this uh, pilgrim journey that leads to heaven. Actually, what the Bible is talking about here is a gracious restoration of backsliders. The gracious restoration of backsliders. Who are the backsliders? The people that knew the Lord before. The ones believed in the Lord. But then they strayed away from the Lord, strayed away from the truth, and strayed away from the fold. But there is a loving Father, a compassionate Savior, waiting to receive and restore the backslider, if the backslider will repent and turn to the Lord's loving arms. But I need to tell you that in Christendom, even in evangelical circles as well as Pentecostal circles, there are two extreme positions that people take concerning the subject of backsliding. On the one hand, there are some false teachers that teach that believers in Christ are so eternally secured in Him that none can backslide and be lost. That once you are saved, you are forever saved. That even if that individual is rebelling against the Lord and is kicking against the commandments of God, fighting against the Lord in his backsliding states, they tell us that they are saved and forever saved, and it can never be lost. Of course, that is wrong. The other side is also wrong, because this other side says that believers who backslide, and they go back into sin, who forsake the grace of the Lord. Once they fall from grace, they cannot be restored into grace anymore. That is also wrong. Both extremes are wrong, because they are contrary to the teaching and revelation of God's word, as we learn from both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Backsliding is not to be encouraged. But we want to say that if anyone has backsliding, the grace of God is available, that that individual can come back to the Lord, and the Lord is offering forgiveness and offering restoration. If that individual will repent, return to the Lord fully with all his heart and with all his soul. There are three points we are going to consider today. Number one, the strain away of the backslider. The strain away of the backslider. Number two, the spiritual stage of backsliders. The spiritual stage of backsliders. And then number three, salvation for repentant backsliders. Number one, the strain away of the backslider. Let's look at this uh, epistle of James, chapter 5, verse 19 again. It says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, 
and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. The uh, two verses we're reading and studying today, those two verses are addressed to believers. You will see how James uh, captions and starts that verse 19. It says, brethren, who are the brethren? They are members of the family of God. Who are the brethren? They are brothers and sisters in Christ. Who are the brethren? They are the followers of Christ and disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who are the brethren? They are the people that have turned away from their sins and they have received the Lord Jesus Christ and they have the Spirit of God at one time crying in their heart, Abba, Father. And it says, brethren, children of God, if any of you... Incidentally, that is not the first time that uh, James will use uh, those words, any of you. Uh, please uh, look at that same uh, chapter and look at verse 13. It says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any among you a sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. From those verses I've read to you, you will find how... James uses those words, any of you. That means, you are children of God. If any of you children of God, any of you believers, if any of you people of God, err from the truth. What does it mean to err from the truth? It means to stray away from the truth. It means to go away from the truth. It means to leave the place where you were before, the, the presence of God where you were before, the grace of God where you were before, if any of you do err from the truth, and then one convert him. He now needs conversion. That means that he has become a backslider. He has shifted away from the standing steadfastness that he had before. And if you look at the Bible, you will find that backsliding is a teaching of the word of God. Backsliding is not good, and we do not want anyone to backslide. Neither does God have any pleasure in anyone backsliding, but backsliding is a reality. And as we study the word of God, you find that that reality is a giving to us, number one, in prophecy. Number two, in reality. That is in history. In historical facts, we are told there were people that backslid. In prophetic utterance, we are told that there will be people that will backslide. Look at the word of God in First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. I appreciate as you open your Bible. In First Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. Here we have the prophetic word of the Lord. It says now, the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. You see that? That's prophecy. It says, they were in the faith. They believed in the Lord. They placed their trust and confidence and faith in God. But it says, some shall depart from the faith. When they depart from the faith, what will be their condition? Look at it. It says, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And then I told you that in reality, that is an historical fact, there are people that have strayed away from the Lord, they backslid from the Lord. Look at Second Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18. It says, Who concerning the truth have erred, saying, The resurrection is past already, and have overthrown the overthrow, the faith of some. Do you see here, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, it tells us, in prophetic language, it will happen in the last days. But in this Second Timothy, it tells us not in prophecy now. It tells us as a matter of fact, historical fact, as reality. It says that concerning the truth, they have erred. And it says, they say the resurrection is past already. And it is not only that they backslid themselves, they overthrow the faith of some. And as you check up in the Old Testament, you find that even in the Old Testament, there is the evidence that there were people that knew the Lord before, but then backsliding came. They strayed away from the Lord. They went away from the Lord. 
they were in grace before they were not in grace anymore they were in the light before they were not in the light anymore they were in fellowship with god before they were not in fellowship with god anymore they had the presence of god with them before the presence of god was not there anymore the protection of the lord was there before but the protection of the lord is no more there they had the peace of god because when you have faith in the lord you have peace with god they had peace with god before but the peace of god was no more there in fact the bible says they were holiness unto the lord but they were not more, no more holy unto the lord anymore in jeremiah chapter 2 jeremiah chapter 2 verse 3 israel was holiness unto the lord from the use of the tense there you will see it said israel was in the past no more today which means that they were in the lord before they were born again before they knew the lord before they were present before with the lord before but now that had changed israel was holiness unto the lord that means then you understand that there is backsliding and the bible teaches teaches it very clearly in verse 17 of that same chapter as thou not procured this unto thyself in that thou hast forsaken the lord thy god which when he led thee by the way here we are told that these people were led by the lord they were children of god what does the bible say as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the children of god they were the children of god but now it says that they were no more of the lord then they were no more with the lord that means then if somebody had been in the lord having fellowship with the lord walking in the way of righteousness if he strays away if he goes away if he does not stand steadfastly where he was before and he goes away from the truth and he goes away from the grace of god that is backsliding and then what's the what's the lord's attitude when there is backsliding like that in hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 Verses 38 and 39. Here we find that the reality of backsliding is still pointed to us, is still painted for us, as well as the attitude of the Lord towards the people that backslide. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, there you are back sliding sliding back drawing back going away from the lord it says if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him if any man draw back you begin to wonder are there people we can point to in the bible that fit into that description if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him you remember saul the soul of the old testament he knew the lord while he turned away from going from samuel god gave him another heart but the bible later says because of disobedience and rebellion the lord says i have rejected him then the children of israel were blunt all about them and i've read it to you already it says israel was holiness unto the lord and so you find in the old testament there are cases of the people that turned away from the lord come on to the new testament were well, there are people that knew the lord before but a time came when they did not know the lord anymore when they departed from the lord oh yes you remember the case of judas iscariot was she was he born again before you better believe he was born again he was one of the people that jesus sent out to go and preach repentance and jesus could not have sent him out with power and authority to preach repentance if he himself had not repented but you see what the bible says open your bible to acts chapter one in acts chapter one we're told about this judas iscariot that in verse 17 Look at verse 17. For he was numbered with us, and he obtained part of this ministry. Look at verse 20. Uh, verse 21. It says, uh, over there, uh, wherefore of these men, uh, which have accompanied with us all the time uh, that, the, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, begin and then he goes on uh, to say they wanted to choose somebody to replace Judas Iscariot. Why were they choosing somebody to replace Judas Iscariot? In verse 25, that he may take part in this of this ministry. That's the person they will take. An apostleship from which Judas 
by transgression, what's the next word? Fell. He felt that he might go to his own place. He was standing before. How can somebody fall? Somebody who is lying down, can he fall? No, but somebody who is standing up. He was standing in the grace of God. He was standing in the love of God. He was standing in the truth and righteousness of the Lord before. He was standing in the ministry that the Lord had called him to. But then we're told now, he fell from grace. He fell from the truth. He fell from from his steadfastness and he fell by transgression and so you understand that there is backsliding and the bible makes it very clear that if we're not to backslide then we have to watch against temptation we have to pray against temptation in ezekiel chapter 18 still telling us uh, of the straying away of the backslider of the possibility of going away from the lord ezekiel chapter 18 in verse 24. Ezekiel 18, 24. It says, But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he leave? Somebody who had known the Lord before, who had been washed in the blood of the Lamb, who had been made righteous by the grace of God, that person, when he leaves his righteousness, and he departs from that righteousness, and he commits iniquity, the Bible says, shall he leave? Will he continue to enjoy eternal life in the presence of the Lord? Look at that verse 24. All his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be mentioned in his trespass, that he has trespassed, and in his sin, that he has sinned, in them shall he die. In verse 26, when a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he has done, shall he he die. And so you understand what the Bible says uh, very clearly that uh, there is something that is called backsliding, going away from the faith, straying away from the faith, erring from the truth, and falling away from the grace of God. And you better be very careful in your own Christian life and stand firm so that nothing will happen that will make you turn your back against the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Hebrews 3 verse 12. Here is the warning of the Lord for us, as well as exhortation, as well as encouragement for the child of God. The one that is still standing today, say, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you. Again, he's talking to the brethren. And he's saying, any of you, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. You cannot leave a house if you have not been in that house before. You cannot leave and depart from a particular point if you had not been in that point before. The very fact is saying that lest you depart from the living God means you were with the living God before. You were a child of God before. But now, if you backslide, if you turn away from the truth, then you depart from the living God and then such a person becomes a backslider. In in second Peter, second Peter chapter three, verse seventeen. It says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also being led away uh, by what the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. The word of God is very clear what I read to you there. It says, Ye therefore, beloved. It's talking to brothers and sisters. It's talking to members of the family of God. It's talking to children of God. And it says, you therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before. It says, beware. It says, take heed. It says, there is danger. Don't live your life as if you are saved and forever saved. As if there is no danger. As if whatever happens, I will always be in Christ. It says, lest ye also be led away. That means so are in the Lord before. But if you are not careful, and if you are not watching, and if you are not prayerful, you'll be led away with the error of the wicked. And then it says, you'll fall from your own steadfastness. I pray the Lord will keep every one of us. We will not fall from the grace of God in Jesus' name. I go to point number two. Spirit, the spiritual stage of backsliders. The spiritual stage of 
backsliders. We'll come back to James chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him. You notice the word that is used now. This man that was in Christ before. This man that was a follower of Jesus before. This man that had the grace of God in his life before. He has gone away now. He has strayed away. erred from the truth. One convert him. He needs conversion. He needs salvation. He needs restoration. It's lost eternal life. He needs the restoration of that eternal life back to him. That's why it says, let him know that he which converted the sinner. He is now the sinner. You understand in verse 19, he is any of us. He, is a, he was a brother. He was a sister. She was a sister. She was a child of God, a member of the fold of Christ. That's what you find in verse 19. But now when you go to verse 20, after he has strayed away and he has gone away from the truth, he is now the sinner. Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of of his way is no more in the truth is now in error is no more standing in christ who is the way the truth and the life is now in falsehood it says it will save a soul from death he needs salvation now he needs to be saved now and he needs to be brought back out of death into life and then shall hide the multitude of sins and so you understand what the bible is telling us James, inspired by the Holy Ghost, tells us the pitiable spiritual condition and spiritual state of the backslider. He refers to that backslider as a sinner who needs conversion now. The backslider then is a person that has erred from the truth and he needs to be recovered from the error of his way. He is not spiritually dead. When, it, when the Bible says he's spiritually dead, it means he's now separated from the living God. And his soul must now be saved from death. Only by repenting and turning to the Lord will he be able to receive Christ as a Savior. And then afresh, he'll be able to have the forgiveness of his sins and he'll have the peace of God once again. And let's look at the testimony of the scripture. As the scriptures tell us, the condition, the spiritual state of the backslider. And if you are a backslider, this is what you would have noticed in your own self in Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21, reading there from verse 16. Proverbs 21 verse 16, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He wanders out. He strays out. He goes astray in the way of unbelievers. He was in the congregation of the children of God before, but now he's gone away. And he's now in the congregation of the dead. That's the condition of the backslider. He does not have life eternal life. He does not have life, abundant life. He does not have life, spiritual life. He is caught away from the very flow of the life of God in him. And then we're told about this uh, prodigal son. We know the story, but let me point something to you that relates with the lesson, the teaching we're having today. In Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. From verse 11. To verse 13. And he said a certain manner to sons. And the younger of them said to his father. Father give me the portion of the goods that followed to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after. The younger son gathered all together. And took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. It's talking is actually giving a parable here, and it is a parable of somebody who was a member of the family. And it was a, it's a parable of somebody who was in the fold, a member of the body of Christ, a person that knew the Lord. But then something came upon him, he wanted independence. He wanted selfish, sexual, or perhaps a perverted uh, indulgence. And then he wanted to go out of the fold, out of the family. 
and eventually decided that he will go. And the father did not tie him down. You know why? Because we have freedom to choose. Because we're free moral agents. And because we're free moral agents, the father allowed him to go. And when he went, he went to a far country. And he wasted everything that he had, the resources of the father. That's the picture of the person that has wasted the grace of God, the goodness of God, the righteousness, the riches of the kingdom that he had before. He's wasted everything. He doesn't have any grace, any righteousness, any testimony, any witness of the goodness of the Lord or any witness of his name being in the book of life anymore. Now he's wasted everything with rioters living. What did the father say about this young man when he came back? For you to understand the condition and the state of the backslider. Look at verse 24. In verse 24 it says, For this my son was dead and is alive again. He didn't die physically. But he was dead, away from the family, away from the presence of the Father, away from the grace of God, away from the life that Christ has given us. You are dead. And when you are separated from the Lord, and the grace of God is no more there, this, my son, was dead. And it is when you come back, it's alive again. And then it says, he was lost. The same condition as the condition of the sinner. He was lost, and then it says, is found again. That shows you then the condition of the backslider. In fact, something terrible happens to the backslider in Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. Uh, this is the chapter where the children of Israel, uh, they made uh, the golden calf and they, what, they were dancing around it and worshipping an idol. After they had been redeemed, after they had been saved from the bondage of Egypt, which is actually a picture of our salvation. Because you remember at that time when the Lord said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. But now after they had been saved, after they had been redeemed, after their sins had been washed away, after they had become the children of God by faith in the, in the shed blood of the Lamb, they went back into idol worship again. That's backsliding. See what happens to the backslider in Exodus chapter 32, verse 32 and verse 33. Exodus chapter 32, verse 32 and verse 33. Yet now, here Moses was talking to the Lord, If thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. The names were written in the book of life before. But when a backslider goes away from the Lord, his name that was in the book of life before, that name is now taken away. It's like a branch that was in the vine. But now that branch has been taken away, has been cut off from, uh, the, from the root or from the stem of the vine. In Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, reading from verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell severity. You understand, there are people that fall from grace on them which fell the people that did not remain steadfast in their faith, the people that did not remain in Christ, the people that did not remain in the truth, they fell on them which fell, severity and toward thee goodness, but that goodness will only continue if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut up. So you understand then the spiritual state of backsliders. In fact, the Bible says that backsliders are in a worse condition than uh, the, the condition of the sinners who never knew the Lord before. In Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. Verses 20, 21, and 22. 
For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus, of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a minute. Who are those people? The people that escape the pollutions. The people that are no more in the pollutions and the perversions of the world. Those are the same people. Those are people that are born again. Those are people that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Those are people that are in the grace of God. They escaped the pollutions of the world. How did they escape the pollutions uh, in the world? Through the knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But now it says in that same verse, If they are again entangled therein, that's if they backslide. If they go back to their vomit, if they go back to the mire from which they had been raised up before, if they go back to the defilement and the pollutions that they escaped before, if they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his vomit again the word again means uh, you know those things were not there anymore they were saved, they were born again, they were cleansed, they were clean and holy, righteous before the Lord. But then because of backsliding, they yielded to temptation, they yielded to sin. It says they are now returned again into their vomit. And the soul, that is the swine, that is the pig that was washed to have wallowing in the mire once again. So you understand then uh, the difficulty or the state or the terrible condition of the people that backslide. Now, why are we studying something like this? Number one, because it's in the Bible. Number two, to warn ourselves so that that thing that happened to other people will not happen to us. And if the thing will not happen to us, we need to know the people that backslide, how do they actually backslide? What makes them backslide? What did they do that made them to fall from the steadfastness and the grace of God in which they were before? Let me quickly show you. Number one, in uh, Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. We're reading there from verse 58. Matthew 26, verse 58. It says, But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace. And he went in, and he sat with the servants to see the end. He followed from afar. You have been following the Lord intimately and closely. And you have loved the Lord when you were born again. Prayer was something intimate with you. And reading the word of God was something you enjoyed and delighted in. And uh, everything spiritual was your delight. But now you begin to lessen your commitment and lessen your consecration. And then you begin to follow the Lord afar off. That is the beginning of backsliding. And then you see there, he sat down with the people that do not know the Lord. He wanted to see the end of the matter. That's the second thing that uh, uh, causes backsliding. Hosea chapter 7. Hosea chapter 7. We're reading there from verse 8. In Hosea chapter 7 verse 8, it says Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. You are a believer. When you begin to mix yourself with the people of the world, with the people that are jesting and joking and gambling and smoking and drinking, and they become your intimate friends and the people you love and the people that you are sharing your heart with, backsliding is coming on the way. Number one, walking far away from the Lord. Still following the Lord, but from afar. Number two, is mixing yourself with the people of the world. Number three, now you begin to even build the things you forsook before. Uh, uh, your life, now you begin to return, you begin to say, after all, what is bad in this? After all, why did I forsake that? After all, why was I so foolish to burn that thing away? In Galatians chapter 2, 
Galatians chapter 2, verse 18. For if I build again the things which I destroyed in the past, I make myself a transgressor. The things you have forsaken before, the things you repented of before, when you begin to go back into them, and you begin to build them up again, begin to bring them into your life again, you are now writing again to your old girlfriend, old boyfriend, that you forsook many, many years ago, and you are saying, I don't know how I'm going to live my life without this man. You made restitution with that man uh, some time ago, but now because of what shall we eat and what shall we drink, you begin to visit him. I'm not uh, going to commit sin. I'm only asking that he will give money for my upkeep. After all, we spent many years together, and we contributed to building that house together, and little by little you begin to build again the sin that you destroyed before. Number four, when we become so busy, we're busy, there is no time to read the word of God. Quiet time, there is no time. And reading the Bible, personal study of the word, there is no time. We, became, we become so busy backsliding, we're setting in Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 6. Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 6, look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. When you become so concerned about other people, salvation of other people, steadfastness of other people, a restitution of other people, the things that concern other people, your own life you are not taking care of anymore. All you want is just preaching and so winning and doing this and doing that. You are busy here, you are busy there. You don't have time for yourself anymore. And the Lord is not speaking to you anymore because you are not speaking to the Lord yourself backsliding will come and then number five when some little little things that you you will say this one doesn't matter this one doesn't in fact i know a sanctified brother i know a beloved steadfast sister that even does that thing and if i do it it doesn't uh, matter in, in songs of solomon chapter 2 verse 15 take us the little foxes the little foxes, the, the little foxes that spoil the vine, for our vines have tender graves. When you begin to get into those uh, little, little things, and uh, you know the unbelievers uh, will call you, come, 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 come and see something on the television. And uh, this is not sinful. This is a good thing. In fact, they are preaching the gospel. It's a very good uh, choir song. And then you go in there, you sit down there. When that one finishes, pornography will come in. I will soon get up. I will soon get up. I will soon leave. I will soon abandon it. And then the next day again, uh, the person, come, come, come. I uh, see this preacher, American preacher. He's there again. He's talking about uh, your church. And then you come in there. You see now again, little by little by little, your conscience is telling you, are you not going away? Are you not uh, getting away from the truth that you stood upon before? No, this one doesn't matter. After all, they are just preaching on it. And when those little, little things multiply, you will find that eventually backsliding has come. Number six is when you become prayerless. There's no prayer anymore. No time to pray. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. How about your prayer life today? How are you doing about praying? How are you really uh, storming heaven? I'm not talking about praying for healing and praying for deliverance and praying for all those uh, mundane material things. I'm talking about your spiritual life. You want to be strong in the Lord. You want to be fervent in the Lord. You want to be zealous in the Lord. And you want to stand your ground so that the devil will not push you down and push you back into sin again. Are you still that prayerful? If prayer time is now uh, not there anymore. Backsliding is coming. Hosea chapter 8. Hosea chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 12. When you begin to now reject the word of God. 
and the word of God comes, and then you say, well, I'm not a new convert anymore. I'm not a, a person, a novice that just came. That one they are saying, that one is too hard. That one is strange. I didn't hear that one before. No, that one cannot be true. I will not accept that one. When you begin to pick and choose in the word of God, I accept this, I don't accept that. I will take this, I will not take that. When that comes into your life, backsliding is coming. Hosea chapter 8 and in verse 12. Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. The Lord said about these people, I have written to him, I have given it unto him, the great, great matters of my law, of my word. But now because they are backsliding, they count that as a strange thing. In verse 3 of that same chapter, Israel has cast off the sin that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. When those doctrines that we have loved and appreciated, and every one of us have been rejoicing because of the deep doctrines and the deep teachings of the word of God, when you begin to cast them off, I don't accept that anymore. I used to believe that. I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe restitution anymore. I don't believe sanctification anymore. I don't believe anybody and everybody can be holy. Maybe some special few people like so and so and so and so. Maybe they can be holy. I do not accept it for everybody anymore. Backsliding is coming. Number eight is when your emphasis comes on material things. Material things. Every time you are praying now, material things. Every time, whatever you are looking for now, material things. Material things, you go to that other place, get to this other place, because you are looking, not because you want to be sanctified, not because you want to be holy, not because you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, not because you want to be ready, prepared for the coming of the Lord, but because of material things you are running about. That's backsliding in uh, Psalm 106, verse 15. Psalm 106, verse 15. He gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. He gave them uh, the bread and butter they were looking for. The quails and the flesh they were looking for. He gave them the material things for the body they were looking for. And their body was uh, getting fatter, and their body was getting improved. But in the spiritual, it says, he sent leanness into their soul. And then number nine, is when there is pride. The pride, uh, you know, you, you have arrived now. You've been saved and you have been sanctified and you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. And you know about this, you know about that. And you can tell the story of that and the history of that. And everything that comes up, you always have a word you are going to say about such and such. Pride has now come in, spiritual pride. When that pride comes in, backsliding will not be far. In Second Chronicles chapter 26. Second Chronicles chapter 26 verse 16. Look at the latter part of verse 15, the last line. For he was marvelously helped till he was strong. The grace of God was there. The goodness of the Lord was there. He was marvelously helped until he became strong. Now in verse 16, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Because for he transgressed against the Lord his God. And he went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. You discover there the people that uh, they do not remain humble before the Lord. They do not remain a people of no, uh, of no consequence before the Lord. They want to make of them now reputation, which the Lord did not do. And then pride comes in and they act in any way and they, they just say anything they want to say and do anything they want to do because after all they are no more babes in Christ they are matured people in Christ that's what gets us into trouble number 10 is when we follow the advice of unstable people advice of people that are not spiritual advice of people that do not really fully know the Lord and they are not wholeheartedly following the Lord but because uh, that problem has been weighing you down you are looking for counseling, you are looking for advice, and anywhere the advice is coming from, you do not mind. That's backsliding. Look at Second uh, Chronicles and in chapter 22, verse 4. 
Second Chronicles chapter 22, verse 4, Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab. Why? Because for they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. You know, unstable people came into his life and they began to counsel him and they began to tell him, this is the way to go, that's the way to go, that's the way to go. And the original truth he knew, he deviated, he shifted away from that original truth because unstable people, unsanctified people, and people that really were not following the Lord steadfastly, they became his counselor. Uh, that means that we have to be careful in our lives. Number one, you are not following afar off. Number two, you do not want to mix yourself with unbelievers and the people of the world. Number three, you do not want to build again what you have destroyed before. Number four, you do not want to be too busy that you will not have time for your own spiritual life. Number five, you do not want to say that's a little thing, that's a little fox, it doesn't matter. And eventually the termites of those little, little things, they, they, they take away and eat away your Christian life. Number six, you don't want to be prayerless. You want to understand that prayer will make you strong and continue with the Lord. Number seven, you do not want to count the, the great things of the Lord of God as a strange thing. Number eight, your emphasis will not be on material things, mundane things. Number nine, there is nothing to be proud about. What have you got that you have not been given? And if you have received it, why do you glory and you are so proud as if you did not receive it? Number 10, you will forsake and run away from the advice of unstable people. Now we come to number 3, salvation for repentant backsliders. Salvation for repentant backsliders. In James chapter 5, we're back to verses 19 and 20. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Here we find the grace of God. Here we find the mercy of God and the love of God. That even if someone has backsliding, restoration is possible. The restoration of backsliders is not automatic though. Because there must still be repentance. And there must be faith in Christ. Just as a sinner does not automatically get converted, get saved, without coming to Christ in God's appointed way. In the same way, a backslider cannot just be restored into the fold without really coming to the Lord. I need to remind you, there are people that backslide and they never come back again. There are people that go away from the Lord and they do not retrace their step back to their home, back to the father's presence like the prodigal son. You will remember the case of uh, uh, the, the case of Saul. He backslid, he went away from the Lord. There is no record he came back. In fact, we are told that he died under the displeasure of the Lord. The spirit of God left him. An evil spirit took over. Eventually he committed suicide. He killed himself. You remember Judas Iscariot, there was no way for him to come back. There was sorrow, there was regret, there was remorse, but there was no genuine repentance. That's the warning for you and for me, for everyone, that we should not think, well, it's so easy. If I go, then I will come back and I will plead with the Lord and everything will be all right. We don't know it may not be all right. But now that the Lord's mercy is still available, that the door of grace is still open, then you want to come back like Peter so that if you come back like Peter then the Lord will receive you. The Lord has made the promise that he will receive if we will come back to him. I, I mentioned the case of Peter. Let's look at him in Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22 verses 31 and 32 and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, that thy faith uh, fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. The Lord knew that he will backslide. 
uh, because he was not taking warning. Look at verse 33, and he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Self-confidence, overconfidence can get us into that backsliding position. But thank God, Peter, he realized, because eventually uh, he, he repented and went bitterly. I want you to see the account of his restoration. In Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26, in verse 74, Then began he to curse, that's in his bacterial state, and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which he said unto him, Before the cock crew, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and did what? Tell me out loud. He wept bitterly. He was an adult. He was a married man. And he was a person that had worked miracles before. But he forgot all about that. He knew that backsliding had come upon him. He remembered the word of the Lord. And a, a conviction gripped him. And then we're told he, he went out and he wept bitterly. In Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. Verses 20 to 22. Jeremiah chapter 3 from verse 20. Uh, here we learn the word of God. Surely, as a wife treacherously departed from her husband, so have ye dead treacherously with me, O house of Israel, says the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplication. And then it says, for the, of the children of Israel, it says, for they have perverted their way. That's backsliding. They have forgotten the Lord their God. That's backsliding. Return. Here the Lord was telling them and calling them that they ought to return. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. And so you find here that uh, the promise is there, that if you will come, come back to the Lord. The Lord says he will forgive. And in fact, uh, you have read the Old Testament to you. I don't want you to think that maybe that's just the Old Testament. Come to the New Testament in Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. It says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast led thy first love. Here were people that knew the Lord. Here were people that had good relationship with the Lord. You see it from verse 2. I know thy works. I know thy labor. I know thy patience, how thou canst not bear with them that are evil, and thou hast tried them, which say the apostles and are not, and have found them liars, and thou hast borne and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted. They were believers, but then activities went on. But the real love for the Lord, that had departed from them. They had gone away from the real love of God. And what's the first commandment of the word of God? Hear, O Israel, here you will love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, that thou mayest live. That first love, they had cast away. Nevertheless, in verse 4, I have some word against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, they fell, repent, they needed repentance, and do the first words, or else, if there is no repentance, if you feel it doesn't matter, once a child of God, I'm always a child of God, I can misbehave now, I can commit sin now, whatever I do, it doesn't matter anymore, because once you are in grace, you're always in grace, if you don't repent or else, I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. And so you understand that uh, repentance is very important. In fact, uh, God uh, went ahead to even put the words in their mouth, telling them, showing them, teaching them, instructing them how they ought to pray. How a backslider ought to pray. How does a backslider pray so that he will be restored? Hosea chapter 14. Hosea chapter 14 from verse 1. O Israel, Return unto the Lord thy God, 
For thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. That's backsliding. God was telling Israel, he said, you are falling. Don't you see you are not where you used to be? The love of God in you. The righteousness in you. The grace in you. The steadfastness that was there before. The relationship that was there before. The peace of God that was there before. The presence of God in your life that was there before. The power and the protection of the Lord that was there before. The, the consciousness of uh, the Lord that was there before. The conviction that you used to have. The consecration that you used to have. Don't you see that it's no more there? The hotness, the fervency, and the zeal that you used to have. Don't you see that because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, and then that your love has wax cold now, and you are lukewarm, and it's threatening that it will spill you out of his mouth. He says you are falling by than iniquity in verse 2. Come back, take with you words, and turn to the Lord, and say unto him, Take away all iniquity. That's how the backslider is to pray. Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. We do not depend upon the works of our hand. We do not lean upon any good works we have done. We are depending upon your grace. Only the grace of God can bring the sinner back, can bring the backslider back into what he has lost. In verse 3, Asher shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses, neither will we save to any of the work of our hand ye are our gods they were to repent from all the idolatry all the kind of confidence they placed in material things now they were to remove their confidences away from all those things for in thee the fatherless have mercy and then here is the promise of the lord i will heal their backsliding i will love them freely for mine anger is turned away from him the lord is telling you if you'll come tonight it doesn't matter what you've done. You've gone into the far country. You've gone very deep into sin. You have mixed yourself with the people of the world. And you have done things that made the Lord angry. The Lord says he will turn his anger away. He will love us freely. He will show us his grace. And everything will come back to what it used to be again. In verse 9, who is a wise man? And he shall understand these things. And prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. And the just shall walk in them. The Lord is calling everybody. He's calling us back home. Why don't you rise up and say, I'm coming back home. I'm coming back home. Examine your life. Examine your ways. And see the things you have done that the Lord is not pleased with. If there is backsliding there. If you have committed secret sin. If you are hiding it. And now you don't have any peace. Now your name is not in the book of life. If you have sinned in any way. And you know that you have, you have lost the life of God. Eternal life from you. You want to call upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, save me again. Restore me again. Change my life again. I want to come back to the Lord. I want to come back to the fold. If you are a child of God and you have not backslidden, then praise the Lord and say, Lord, uh, let him that thinketh his standard take it lest he fall. I thank you that I'm standing. I praise you that I'm standing, but I don't want to take anything for granted. Help me. Help me. Help me. Let your grace be abundant in my life. Help me to keep on loving the truth. Help me to keep on living by the word of God. Increase, improve my prayer life. Help me so that my life will be totally yielded and committed unto you. You are a child of God. You are standing. Don't take things for granted. There are people that have been overconfident in the past and they fell. You remember Simon Peter. He fell. But you want to call upon the Lord. I will not take anything for granted. Oh Lord, hold my hand. Oh Lord, hold my hand. And keep me so that I will not fall. If you are falling already, there is the gate that is open now. And you can come back home. 